training video 2-2. Trainees, have you completed your reference triangles in your warm-up? Affirmative. Let's verify the Pythagorean theorem for both of these together. The Pythagorean theorem states a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So side squared plus side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So in our case, we would take one half as one of our legs squared plus root three over two as our other leg squared equals our hypotenuse one because it is on the unit circle squared. One half squared is one fourth root three over two squared, root three squared is three, two squared is four. So three over four equals one squared is one, one fourth plus three fourths is in fact one. So we have confirmed the Pythagorean theorem for the reference triangle at pi over three radians. Let's do the same for seven pi over four. Seven pi over four is a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle. So our side lengths are root two over two and negative root two over two both of those squared. So root two over two squared, root two squared is two, two squared is four. So two over four would be one half. Negative root two over two squared is the same thing because we are squaring a negative. So we have one half plus one half, which is in fact one. Pythagorean theorem verified. Let's take a closer look. If we label the coordinate on our reference triangle, we can see that the X and Y coordinate correspond to the values in our Pythagorean theorem verification. So we could write X coordinate squared plus Y coordinate squared equals one. Now let's see if that holds true. In the second example, we could label the coordinate as well. And we can see that the root two over two, which is the X coordinate, corresponds to the Pythagorean theorem verification as well as the Y coordinate. So we'd have the same result. What did these x and y coordinates mean to us back on the unit circle? What can we conclude from this, Agent R? We see, Agent M, that actually what we did was take trigonometric functions, square them, and it equaled one. That's a little confusing. Let's look at this closer. Sine pi thirds quantity squared plus cosine pi thirds quantity squared. Let's examine. Sine of pi thirds, as we can see from the unit circle, is root three over two, and we will square that. Cosine of pi thirds is one half squared. As you saw in the previous example, this ends up being three fourths plus one fourth, which equals one. Interesting. Sine squared pi thirds plus cosine squared pi thirds equals one. Does this work always? Next example, I am going to use alternate notation. Please be aware of this new notation. Cosine squared seven pi fourths plus sine squared seven pi fourths. This is very useful notation. The square goes in next to the trig function. It is equivalent to saying cosine of seven pi fourths quantity squared. And indeed, trainees, we see cosine squared of seven pi fourths and sine squared of seven pi fourths equals one. How does this apply? Agent M, we must show them that this works for all values of theta, given sine squared and cosine squared. What if we were 2.5 radians? Indeed, we have discovered another identity. These are the Pythagorean identities, and this is the beginning. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Yes, it always works. Thank you, Agent R. We can confirm that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. This is yet another identity we would want to add to our handbook. We call this the Pythagorean identity. The Pythagorean identity can take on three forms. So this is one of the three forms. To find the other forms, we simply manipulate the identity. Let's divide by sine squared theta and see what happens. We must divide each piece of the equation by sine squared theta to maintain the equality. Sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is one, plus cosine squared theta over sine squared theta equals one divided by sine squared theta. Cosine over sine is cotangent. So cosine squared over sine squared would logically also make sense as cotangent squared. So one plus cotangent squared theta equals one over sine is cosecant. So one over sine squared theta would be cosecant squared theta. Okay. So our second form of the Pythagorean identity is one plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Let's try to find the third form. Back to the original identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Let's try to divide this now by cosine squared theta. 
Sine squared over cosine squared. Sine over cosine is tangent, so sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared theta. Plus, cosine squared over cosine squared is one, equals one over cosine squared theta. One over cosine is secant, so secant squared theta. So our three Pythagorean identities that we now must add to our manual are sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, one plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta, and tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. Agent R, how could we use these to unmask trig expressions? Let's make sure we have our identities correct. Trainees, please complete section two. This will be integral in your ability to proceed in this program. Let's check. Cosecant theta is equal to one divided by sine theta. Secant theta, one divided by cosine theta. Trainees, please remember the near interplanetary disaster we almost had. These identities are important. Cotangent is equal to one divided by tangent theta. Quotient identities, cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta divided by sine theta, whereas tangent theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta. Remember now, we also have the Pythagorean identities. These have been filled in for you as they are fairly new at this point. You will be expected to use these with fidelity. Agent M, it is now time to show them how we might encounter different disguises. Remember trainees, this is of the utmost importance. Our planet's safety is on the line. So number three, we are trying to figure out how tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta is masking itself as tangent squared theta times sine squared theta. From our last training session, we learned one strategy was to convert the expression in terms of sine and cosine first. So we could try that here. Tangent squared theta is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Sine squared theta is already in terms of sine, so I don't need to change sine squared theta. I have no multiplication here, so I'm not able to divide anything away like similar examples from our last training session. So I'm going to need a new strategy. Here I have a fraction and a minus sign, so a good strategy might be to find a common denominator. So let's add that into one of our strategies. So my two denominators are cosine squared theta and one. So it looks like I could just multiply the one by cosine squared theta. Now I have to multiply this by a creative form of one. Then I would have sine squared theta for the first fraction, minus sine squared theta times cosine squared theta all over cosine squared theta. Okay, we're still a little stuck. It's very tempting to want to take sine squared theta minus sine squared theta and subtract them, but I can't. The second sine squared theta is attached to a cosine squared theta, so the only thing I maybe could do is see that both numerators terms have a sine squared theta in common, so we could factor out a sine squared theta. That sounds like yet another strategy we may need to record. So factor. So if I factor out sine squared theta, I would have one left in sine squared theta's position inside the parentheses minus cosine squared theta because I factored out the sine squared theta in front of the cosine squared theta all over cosine squared theta. Okay, so now that I have factored out sine squared theta, I have one minus cosine squared theta sitting in parentheses. Usually when I see sine squareds and cosine squareds, I start to think of the Pythagorean identity. The first Pythagorean identity we saw was sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Is there a way I could manipulate that to make it look like one minus cosine squared theta? Well, if I take sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, and I want to make it look like one minus cosine squared theta, I could subtract cosine squared theta to the other side and have sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. So I've taken a Pythagorean identity and rewritten it so it fits my problem a little bit better. So that one minus cosine squared theta is really just a sine squared theta in disguise. So my next line of my simplifying would read sine squared theta, because that was already there, times sine squared theta now instead of one minus cosine squared theta, all over the cosine squared theta in the denominator. It looks like they have a goal there sitting at the bottom of the problem. They want us to be able to show that this equals tangent squared theta times sine squared theta. Well, if I look closely, 
I can see sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, and that's tangent squared theta. And then left behind, I'd have that little sine squared theta from my one minus cosine squared theta. So I have in fact simplified this problem and unmasked it as tangent squared theta sine squared theta. Whew, trainees, that was a tough problem. So remember, you can always rewind and rewatch to make sense of these. The planet depends on it. Agent R, let's try another. Thank you, Agent M. Trainees, number four, there's more than one way to unmask the trig functions. On this one, I wonder if you'd like to give it a try. If so, pause and think about your strategy. Okay, trainees, let's look at one strategy. We can use factoring. Factor out secant squared theta. That leaves one minus cosine squared theta. Secant squared theta is one divided by cosine squared theta. And of course, one minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta as we saw in the prior problem. Then we have sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. And you'll see we wanted to get tangent squared theta and we're there. Good job, trainees. Did you find the other way to do this problem? We could have simply noticed that secant squared theta times cosine squared theta is one. So secant squared theta minus secant squared theta times cosine squared theta, which is one divided by cosine squared theta times cosine squared theta. The cosine squared theta is divide out. We'd have secant squared theta minus one, which is one of our Pythagorean identities. And I actually am at tangent squared theta. It is good to know both methods. You never know what will be required of us. Agent R? Okay, I guess I'm doing this one. Number five, tangent theta cosecant theta. So just a reminder, our strategies we have learned so far is to rewrite the expression in terms of sine and cosine. That was first strategy. Second strategy was to find a common denominator if we saw fractions and subtraction or addition signs. And then the last strategy was to factor out something we saw in common if we needed to. As I look at this example, tangent theta, cosecant theta, I don't see any addition or subtraction where I would need to use a common denominator. I don't see anything in common that I could factor out. So I'm just going to convert everything to sine and cosine. So tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. Cosecant theta, cosecant theta is one over sine theta sine theta over cosine theta times one over sine theta. I can divide out my sine thetas and get one over cosine theta. I can do better than that. Let me write that as secant theta. So secant theta was disguised as tangent theta times cosecant theta. Agent R, please take over. <laughs> Whew, thanks for stepping in, Agent M. They needed me for a moment. Number six, cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. I'm going to go ahead and start with our first strategy and rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. One divided by sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. Why, this is quite fortuitous. They already have a common denominator. Therefore, I have one minus cosine squared theta in the numerator and sine squared theta in the denominator. Once again, we've seen this Pythagorean identity disguised. One minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta. I can substitute an equivalent value. So now I have sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta, which equals one. Good job, trainee. Okay, trainees, we have one last example. I know this has gotten a little bit more difficult, but persevere. Agent M, take it away. Number seven. Cosecant theta minus sine theta. All right, I see a minus sign, so I'm thinking I might need a common denominator, but let's convert things to sine and cosine first. Cosecant theta, one divided by sine theta minus sine theta. I see a fraction and a minus sign, so I'm thinking common denominator. Let me put my sine theta over one. Okay, I want the denominator to be common, so sine theta, so multiply my sine theta over one by sine theta over sine theta, so that I have a common denominator. The denominator would be sine theta, the numerator would read one minus sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. So I see sine squared theta makes me think of that Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. I have one minus sine squared theta. So if I subtract sine squared theta to the other side, it would read cosine squared theta 
equals one minus sine squared theta. I know that one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. So I have cosine squared theta over sine theta. All right, the goal is to get to this to look like cotangent theta, cosine theta. Well, cotangent is cosine over sine. I have cosine squared over sine, so maybe if I split cosine squared up into cosine theta times cosine theta all over sine, I could reveal the cosine over sine right here as cotangent times cosine. So I can see that cosecant theta minus sine theta is in fact cotangent theta cosine theta. The alarm! The alarm! Mission Control, come in. Command Mission Control. Report. Report status. We have a trigonometric disaster. We need all agents to report to Sector X. I repeat, Sector, Sector X. Sector X? Okay. Oh, Agent M, the Chinese. Neuralize them. Hello, trainees. This completes training session 2-2. Please complete the online training and tune in for our next training video.